Well, 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 what do we have here? Welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, I'm a live sound engineer, and this is the channel where I'm bringing you tips and tricks to make better live events. But today, I happen to have a product review. The people at X5 sent me an email and asked me if I would be interested in reviewing their T9 in-ear monitors. And of course I said, yeah. They want to give me some in-ear monitors to have a listen to and see if they're good. That sounds like something I'd like to do. So we're going to take a little look at the T9 in-ear monitors by X5 to have a little listen, see how they sound, and I'll give you my opinion on them. But right now I'm going to use out and sort of use them in the field a little bit and have a little listen, listen to them through mixers, listen to what I'm mixing on them and see how everything sounds. Let's dive into the notes that I made when I first started listening to them. My first impressions were that there was quite a lot of bass on a live stage. You would rather have the availability of that bass than the absence of it. You can always eat your little bit of bass out, right? In a live setting, you're probably going to be running a high pass filter on almost all of your channels anyway. So having that deep bass response isn't going to affect you once you've kind of cut it out. This first listening came from listening to music, just tracks played out of my sound card. But it is worth noting that when you first put them in your ears, if you've not done any treatment, any EQ to it, you might be like, hey, that's quite a lot of bass. Maybe you like that. As a sort of engineer, I'm looking quite often for a flat frequency response when I'm using something. But if you're a performer on a stage, I imagine this is going to be just fine for you. There is really, really good definition in these in-ear monitors though. I mean, like I could hear everything. It was all really well defined and spread out even without me sort of like messing around with the EQ or anything like that. That will come from, I imagine, these two balanced dual armature drivers. More on that in just a second. Essentially, the sound was very rich and complete for me. I think if you're using them in a live sound setting on a stage as a performer, then these are gonna be just great for you in that respect. I looked on the website and on the website, they're suggesting that you use them a little bit for walking about, listening to music as well, just, you know, chilling out, having fun. Also a great application for these, really, really nice. But they also suggest that maybe you're gonna use them in the studio. And I think if you're tracking, recording stuff in, then that's gonna be just fine. But if you're considering using these for mixing in the studio, then I would perhaps recommend against that due to this sort of hyped bass and this sort of lack of top, top end that's there. Again, not a problem for live situations, but just because they're referencing that on their website a little bit. If you've gone to their website, then looked for this review, I want you to know that maybe that's not the best application for that. I did go and have a look at the specifications on the website. The frequency response went from 20 hertz to 16.5 kilohertz. So that is consistent with what I am hearing. But let's dive into the good stuff, right? So these dual balanced armature drivers, what does that mean? Let's start with the driver thing first. Balanced armature drivers are a type of driver that creates the sound. The driver is the part of the headphone that creates the sound for you. You get sort of moving coil drivers and then you also get armature drivers. And the difference is basically like there's a coil which is attached to a diaphragm which moves and creates the sound, it's quite mechanical, or you get this like tiny little arm which is held in the magnetic field that creates the sound based on changes in magnetism based on the signal. All very technical. What you need to know is that balanced armature drivers tend to create a more detailed sound. You can't win them all, you can't have your cake and eat it, so they are more expensive as well. It's quite common in sort of other in-ear monitors or like just earbuds that you're listening to to have two drivers, right? And they are either both moving coil drivers or they might be one moving coil, one balanced armature driver. What we have here in the T9s actually is two balanced armature drivers, right? So you're essentially getting really detailed bass response and really detailed high frequency response. So let's talk again about this dual aspect of it. It's the same as in any sound system, right? When you look, you have subs and tops, right? That's you splitting the frequency spectrum into two separate signals and then reproducing them through two separate drivers, right? The sub is a different driver from the top. The reason that we do this is because certain speaker cones, certain sort of drivers, shall we say, are better tuned to reproduce certain frequencies. What I mean by that is that like, subs are designed to reproduce low frequencies, but they suck at creating high frequencies. Tops are great at creating high frequencies, but they suck at creating bass, like deep, 
proper base. So what we do is we separate those signals and we send them to their individual drivers. We reproduce them separately and then they recombine acoustically in the air. Same thing's happening in these headphones. We are separating the bass and the treble, essentially, recombining it once the sound has been reproduced in the headphone in our ear canal. Long story short, what you get here is a really, really rich, detailed sound. And these in-ear monitors give you some really, really nice detail. So to round off this sort of sound quality section, what I will say is a bit of a hyped bass response. I think they're really, really nice, high quality in-ear monitors. They sound great. I'll give them nine out of 10 for sound. Let's move on to comfort then. You're going to be wearing these a lot. If you're on a stage performing, if, especially if you're taking it seriously, you might be playing for 90 minutes or something, and you need to know that these are gonna feel nice in your ears, right? So I've had these with me for a while. I've used them quite a lot. I've been out and about listening to music on them. I've taken them to shows and worked on them. I've had also like video calls and conference calls on them. And I found that these are really, really comfortable. I mean, like way more comfortable than the other headphones that I was using. I'm going to permanently switch what I'm using when I'm on like video calls and stuff because these were just in my ears and I did not notice them. And so they come out the case with this selection of different earbuds that you can fit to the monitors themselves. Try them all out. And when you find the ones that work, you'll find that they are super, super comfortable. They also come with colored sort of silicone tips, which I think are incredibly useful. I wish all in-ear monitors came with these because you can use these to set one as yellow, one as red and have left and right. Or you could even mark different monitors within your band as like, okay, yellow is like vocal packs and red is instrument packs or something like that. You know, I don't know. It's clearly meant for left and right, but I'm just trying to think of other things that you can do with them. I think it's a great idea anyway. The only minus point I will give for comfort is that they are quite large. They're larger than other in-ear monitors that I've used. If you have tiny ears, maybe that's going to be a problem for you. And as well, if you like your monitors to be like super discreet, then these might be a little more visible than other earphones. But generally speaking, comfort and accessories, really, really good. Finally, on the job, I took them out with me and I used them on shows. I used them when I was mixing. I used them when I was on loud stages and people were playing and I was checking mixes and they performed fantastically, right? I mean, like I really pushed them using a mixer. I smashed the EQ up, did completely unrealistic, crazy EQ stuff to them to see what would happen. Is there going to be any distortion, any compromising sound quality things happening? But no, the sound quality was fantastic the whole time. I was really, really happy with them. A plus on the job for me. The case itself comes with an adapter to switch between a sort of mini jack and a regular full size jack. So you're ready to either plug them into an in-ear belt pack or straight into the mixer if you're using them for mixing monitors. Another big, big plus for me was the sound isolation. So the isolation on these was fantastic. Like I was using them in really loud environments. I could still hear really, really well and they were blocking everything out. Again, it's important that you get a really nice fit, but once you get that fit, they are so, so nice. And I want to just harp on again and say that like, Having good fit and good isolation in your in-ear monitors allows you to have the sound lower and having the sound lower protects your hearing. It's so important that you keep the sound as low as possible really when you are listening to it because it's all about time. I'll leave a link to a video about exposing your ears to noise and hearing damage. Essentially, if you can turn down even one dB, that's gonna make a world of difference to you. Finally, I just wanna mention this sort of just removable cable that they have, right? The cable is separate from the in-ear monitor itself and that is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of that. The cable is always the first thing that breaks on just about anything. So being able to just unplug it, chuck it away, and then get a new one means that these are going to last you a long, long time. In summary, what do I have to say about this? If you're looking to spend a bit of money on some in-ear monitors, then I would absolutely recommend giving these a try. I think compared to some of the competitors at a very similar price point, you'll be very pleasantly surprised by the quality that you get in this product. Like I uh, have to say that I am very surprised myself because I'd never heard of this company before they got in touch and asked me to review this product. And so I had no expectations. Basically, it was like an unnamed brand to me up against, you know, the big hitters in in-ear monitoring. And they absolutely blew out of the park. I think it was a great, great product. And um, I have no problem recommending this at all.
That's all from me on this one. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check out the in your monitors. And if you liked videos like this, please let me know. This was a bit different, so it's nice to know if that works. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see a bit more of either this or other types of tutorials and things that I do. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.